Hey guys, Amber Elise here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am pretty much going to be showing you guys how I prepare for the ASCP Board of Certification exam for Medical Laboratory Science. So I don't want this video to be very long. I do want to kind of just get straight to the point so that way I can tell you guys everything that I did to prepare for the exam. And I want to be very thorough with it. So I wrote some notes. So you'll probably see me either looking to the side or looking down just to make sure that I am um, remembering to tell you guys everything that I wanted to tell you. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys the outline of this video just so you'll know what to kind of expect. I am going to pretty much show you guys the prep material that I use to study for the exam. Then I'll talk to you about my actual study routine. Um, I'll actually show you guys uh, my results from the exam and then I'll kind of fill you guys in where I am now as far as a job, um, the whole licensing process and things like that. The first thing that I'm going to just show you guys are all of the actual study material that I used. So I used about three well, I used three to two books. Two of them are the exact same book. One is just a um, newer addition to the old one. And then there's another separate book that I used. And then of course the famous purple and gold book. And then I used my class notes as well as media lab or as some people call it lab CE. So I'm going to show you guys the two books first that I very, very heavily studied from during my um, prep time. And this is the Board of Certification Study Guide, the fifth and sixth edition. So this is what the fifth edition book looks like. And then I also have the sixth edition book as well. And like I said, there is literally not a difference between these two books besides the fact that this um, sixth edition has a few more questions that this one doesn't. And honestly, I don't feel like it's more of a better prep material than this one just because they are so similar. So if you can find this one for a cheaper price, I would definitely still recommend going with this book just because this is pretty much the one I used anyways. I had a, um, a classmate from a different semester actually give me this one. So like I said, both books are excellent. You can decide to choose which one ever you want, but there's really not much of a difference between the two. The next one that I used was the Medical Laboratory Science Review, and this is also the fifth edition. So that's what this book looks like. And I didn't really get to use this book a whole lot. I used it for, um, certain subjects but like i said i really didn't use it that much the first two books that i just showed you were the ones that i used very heavily when it came to using books to um, do practice questions out of and so those are the three physical books that i have i did use the purple and gold book as i mentioned earlier but i don't actually have that one with me so i'll just pop it up here for you guys that don't know the book that i'm mentioning a lot of um students that are studying knows about the purple and gold book and that's pretty much like um a really really good review material it's not a lot of questions it's usually maybe anywhere from 10 to 15 questions at the end of each section. But if you are looking for review questions, that is not the book. That book is pretty much just to review material that you learn throughout your program. So I definitely recommend that one because that one was very excellent for going back and reviewing all of the material that I learned. And I liked it because it gave really, really great mnemonics and just different clues and different little, you know, fun, fun sayings that helped you remember certain stuff. I also held and kept all of my class notes and that's pretty much what I used as far as my review material before I used the purple and gold book. So I'll get into talking about how I used that alongside the purple and gold book when I kind of tell you guys about my routine. But right now I'm just trying to tell you guys about the actual prep material that I used. And then the last and final thing that I used for prepping was of course, Media Lab. A lot of people know about Media Lab as well, or like I said, some people know it as Lab CE. Those two are interchangeable those are the same um the same website so i believe that it cost about 75 dollars i actually had it um provided for me through my program so i didn't actually have to pay for it and then i say that but i'm pretty sure tuition paid for it so 
$75 is what it retails for because I did get a chance to um, see how much that cost just in case you guys wanted to actually use that for your prep. So now that I have all of the prep material out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about my routine. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start looking at my actual notes that I wrote here just to make sure that I don't forget to tell you guys anything. All right, so my clinical rotations lasted about five months. So I started um, clinicals in January of this year, and then I finished on May 6th of this year. So um, I started studying day one of my clinical rotations. So what I would do is I would wake up around 4.30 to 5 o'clock every day, and I would go to the school and study my class notes first for the first um, one to two weeks, I would use my class notes as well as the purple and gold book to just completely review the material for that particular rotation that I was in. And I would do that before going to the rotation. That way I would kind of have a refresher on the material and I would be able to learn better because I would be able to remember versus them just telling me a lot of stuff and not actually going back remembering and understanding the information. So. Um, not all of my clinical rotations were actually at my school, but a fair amount of them were. So whenever I would have rotations at the school, like I said, I would just use about the first one to two weeks. And that would definitely depend on how long the rotation was, because not all of my rotations lasted three or five weeks. Some of them were only one week. So that was adjusted based off of what it was. But for most of my rotations, they were anywhere between three to five and I would just go through all of my class material. Once I was done with the class material, I would switch to the purple and gold review material and look at that for the first couple of weeks. Then once I was done with my clinical rotation for that day, I would go home and I would just do a lot of practice questions off of Media Lab. And that's pretty much what my routine was. So the books that I showed you guys, I didn't use those um, until towards the end of my rotation. So anywhere between a week or a week and a half, once I had completely finished looking at the review material, then in the morning I would switch to doing practice problems or practice questions before going to my rotation. And I can definitely say that for me personally, um, I'm more of a morning person. So that's why I studied in the morning because in the evening, I just like to use that time to kind of relax and get ready for the next day. So that kind of worked really well for me. And I felt like it was a pretty solid routine that I was able to easily keep up. Just a quick recap of that, because I know that was a lot. In the morning, first for one to two weeks of the rotation, I would strictly just go through all of my old class notes. Then I would move on to the purple and gold book, which was another review. Once I was done looking at all of my review material, I finally moved to that fifth and sixth edition book that I showed you. And I would do all of the practice questions out of that section. And I would just do them each day until I got finished with it. But I would, you know, do as many as I could before my rotation. And then I would come home in the evening and do practice uh, media lab questions from that section or from whatever rotation I was doing. So that was pretty much my daily routine from studying day one all the way up until maybe a week before I took my exam. So like I said, my last day of clinicals was actually on May 6th and I sat for the exam on May 10th. And I gave myself a couple of days off before the exam just because I had studied so much before actually taking the exam that at that point, you know, there was really not much else I could do. So that is pretty much the timeline of how long I studied and how I studied. So now I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about how I actually used Media Lab during my um, study, during my studying. So my program actually required us to do um, five practice exams throughout this span from beginning to the end of rotations. And we actually had weekly assignments as well. So that kind of kept us on our toes about studying because we still had weekly assignments, which either consisted of having worksheets or um, actual quizzes that, we'd had, that we had to do. As well as my clinical rotations, we always had a exam at the end of it as well. So they definitely made sure that we were actually studying because we still had exams and clinicals. Now, going back to the point that I made, we were required to take five exams. And by the end of my studying, I had actually taken eight exams. But I will tell you guys that 
with Media Lab, I did start to begin to see a lot of repeat questions around the third time that I took the exams. So I started doing, um, they had this mode that was called show me questions I've never seen. And I pretty much started doing that and I would just make it into a hundred question test. And that's pretty much how I, after I got the five that I was required to do in the actual test mode, I moved on to doing show me questions that I've never seen just because obviously it's not going to benefit you to keep doing the same questions over and over and over again. You need to try to see as much material as possible. So just wanted to throw that out there about Media Lab. And Media Lab also has game mode. Like I said, the questions, show me questions I've never seen mode. You have the regular test mode. And then you also have where you can just choose a certain amount of questions that you want to do from each subject. And it also breaks down, say for instance, you want to do hematology, but then you want to focus on another um, smaller sub subject within that you can also choose different subjects like that so it's definitely a really good prep material and I personally would recommend it now I will personally say that I thought media lab questions were a lot harder than the actual exam to me the exam was very straightforward um, nothing seemed really tricky about it it was clear cut, you either knew the answer or you didn't. But Media Lab, you have to really, really know the material in depth to answer the questions. So I felt like by using that, it prepared me a lot better just because I had to really know the information to be able to answer the questions on Media Lab. So I would definitely say that if you are thinking about using Media Lab, I would 100% recommend it. So that is pretty much what I did to study for the actual exam. That was my routine every day. Um, that's pretty much how I utilized all of my time for studying. I definitely think that it helps also that you, if you're not already in a program, you want to definitely make sure that you're doing your research and that you go to a really good program because I think that that plays um, a really good part in how well you are prepared for the exam as well. Our, the program that I was in was very rigorous, but I definitely feel like it prepared me. Um, by the time I got ready to sit for the exam, I had all of the information that I needed. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. And by the time I got ready to review, it wasn't like I was learning anything for the first time. So I would definitely recommend that you do your research on the programs that you're going to be signing up for before you just hop into it, obviously, as you should with anything. So now I'm pretty much just going to tell you guys what my score was from the actual exam. So for those of you that don't know, the minimum um, passing score is a 400. I think the maximum is like 900 or either 999. I'm not sure, but most people, you know, we just want to pass the exam. So like I said, I took the exam on May 10th and I passed my exam with a score of 643. So that is what I that was what I was able to get with just my routine. And this is the sheet of paper or the little certification that they give you for three years. And I got this in the mail and it just has my test date and um, how long it will last. So I think you we have to review, we have to renew that every three years for your certification. And then of course your license, you have to renew that every year. So that is what I made on the actual exam. As far as the license process was concerned, that was the most dreadful part, honestly, about this entire process. Um, it took me four months to get my actual license. I did not apply for a temporary license. Most of my classmates before me told me that they got the temporary probably like a week before the actual license came in and I wasn't going to pay $65 for a temp license and it was going to come in around the same time. So that was just my personal experience. It may be different for others, but I graduated in the spring right before summer started. So I think they don't meet as much whenever the summer comes in and that may have been why it took so long. But for my classmates and I and other students um, from other programs, they said that it was the, the background check that really held it up for a while. So I turned in all of my documentation in April to start the process of getting my license. And I'll also link down below um, I'll try to leave a link for Media Lab and I'll also try to leave a link for 
um, LSBME, which is the company that you go through to get your license so that you guys can take a look at all of the different things that you are actually required to turn in and instructions with um, how to fill all of this stuff out. I'll leave all of that down below. So I turned all of that in and it was the end of August before I ever received my license. So it took about four months to get it, but that's pretty much time frame that it took for me. Like I said, I don't believe my classmates before me. It usually takes them like a month and a half before they get their license, but I do just want to throw that out there. So you want to make sure that you're staying on top of everything, getting your transcripts sent over to ASCP so that they will be able to release your scores and you'll be able to pay the $16 to have your scores released to LSBME for your, um, initial license application. And so to end this video, I just wanted to um, kind of talk about where I am now. So two months out from graduation, I actually landed a job at my top choice hospital and I went with a seven on seven off night shift. So I'm actually at the end of my training. Um, today is Saturday, just yesterday, Friday was my last day of training on days. And so I'm about to get ready to switch over on nights. I'll do one week with um, just kind of, you know, training, getting used to the maintenance and everything that we'll be doing at night. And then the following week, I will officially be on my seven on seven off shift. So I'm very excited about that. And um, I've been definitely enjoying where I work. So I, um, I've, I've been enjoying this career so far and I'm very excited and I'm very happy that I finally found a career where I don't dread going to work every day and I actually enjoy my coworkers and I enjoy what I'm doing. So that's just kind of where I am now. Um, I actually applied for a hematology position, but I am trained as a generalist and especially with me working overnight, of course, I'll have to do everything. So, uh, that was kind of what drew me, drew me to the position was that I knew I wouldn't just be stuck in one section and I'd be able to kind of move around and I wanted to be able to know as much about each section in the lab as possible. So that way, if I'm ever, you know, by myself or, you know, we're short staffed, I'll be able to comfortably do everything in the lab. So that's pretty much what drew me to that, um, that position. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I really hope that you guys found some useful information for, um, how to study for the exam is definitely doable. Definitely give yourself enough time to study for the exam um, before taking it. And that's pretty much it. So that was my routine. That was all of the material that I used. So I hope that this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions, of course, leave them down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. So that's pretty much going to conclude this video. If this video was helpful or if you enjoyed the video, please do give me a big thumbs up because it does help my channel. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any friends or family that are going into this field and want to know more about it or they are preparing for this exam, please feel free to share this video and um, hopefully they can get some tips from it as well. So that is going to conclude the video. Until next time, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.